bit of a special recording today. Uh, we do want to cover some vocabulary. This is going to be a what does this mean video, and the vocabulary this time is second guess. Uh, but you can see I'm joined by, I think at this point I can call you a friend, right? So my friend Marissa is joining this call because mm -hmm. the situation <laughs> and this idea came out because of something that she had texted me. So what happened, just to lay down the situation, um, I received a message from a person that I hadn't actually been in contact with so frequently, and me and Marissa were kind of trying to figure out why this person was messaging me. And I said, oh, maybe they want me to delete something for them. I, I think that was the situation. I ask you, like you ask, like I'm guessing, why he suddenly texted you? Right. And this is interesting because it's, it's a vocabulary word where it's close, right? So the base word to guess is to speculate, to hypothesize, like, oh, I guess maybe this is the reason why he wants me to, to do something for him. Maybe, maybe mm -hmm. that's why he texted me. And we could say, I guess, or I guess that's the reason. And that's no problem at all. So what you did, Marissa, is you tried to use new vocabulary word, or maybe you heard second guess somewhere. And that's kind of how you need to use new slang and yeah. new phrases. But unfortunately, you were wrong because second guess <laughs> doesn't really have the same meaning as to guess about something. Mm. The second guess is more about hesitation or when you doubt. And one thing that I wanted to make sure it was clear on this recording that I didn't mention to you when we were texting is usually when you second guess, it's second guessing yourself. So if you are applying for a job or you have an interview for something and ask Marissa, how did you do? And Marissa says, uh, I, I don't know, maybe I answered that question too quickly, maybe I spoke too much during that question. And I can say, Marissa, don't second guess yourself. It's like, stop hesitating, don't, like, don't, don't have this uh, uncertainty about your actual level. And like, that's how second guess would be used. So as you can see, second guess is like actually much more limited. Like the base word to guess, it's like, mm -hmm. oh, I guess that's the case. Maybe in Japanese we have tabun, kamoshirenai, right? And like you can say that pretty often. But to actually use second guess, it's great that you tried, but realistically, you probably won't use the vocabulary word second guess very often. Mm, hypothesis? Hypothesis? And speculation? Say that again. Um, Hypothesis and speculation are more often used. Well, yeah, so that's a really good question. Like, it's not so much that other words are more commonly used, but just thinking about that context, right? So if you don't have mm -hmm. a lot of confidence about yourself and you're kind of thinking, uh, is it this or is it that? That's not a super common situation, right? Mm -hmm. But to like make a prediction about something, that's going to be a more common situation, right? So yeah. I, I guess that's the case. Maybe, or, oh, let's, let's really get together. Let's try to brainstorm. Like if it's an official project or for business, then you would really need to speculate. Then for like a science project, like you really need to form a hypothesis, right? So yeah. is yeah. hypothesis and speculation actually more common? I, I don't think it's helpful to think of it that way, but the situation where you would be making a hypothesis or you would have to speculate, those situations are more common. The situation where, oh, I don't know about my ability, my performance, it's not common in the same way, right? Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm guessing it has more negative meaning. Yeah, so. that's right. Mm. Because most of the time, someone's second-guessing themselves too much. Mm. Can you lay the examples when you use the second guess? So if you're watching, like, th this is another tricky part when people are learning vocabulary, because sometimes you're exposed to something in, like, a movie or a TV show, right? And mm. it, maybe this weekend, if you're watching something, you might see the main character talk to themselves, and they say, oh, I need to stop second-guessing myself, okay? And, of mm. course, in that context, the... English would be perfect, no grammatical mistakes, we can understand it, but language is also influenced by media in that way, right? 
So sometimes mm -hmm. people try to talk like TV shows or because they watch so many TV shows, they start saying the quotes from the show and it seems natural. But if I really think about, it, oh, I need to stop second guessing myself. Is that something I could say? Of course. Is that something that I should be saying often? Is that like a daily phrase? No, probably not. So we can take it first perspective, first person perspective. I need to stop second guessing myself. Or if I'm trying to reassure my friend, hey, you need to stop second guessing yourself. Now, to use other sentence structures, is it possible to do that? It's possible, but just that phrase right there. So we're not even just focusing on the word second guess, but the entire phrase. I need mm. to stop second guessing myself. You need mm. to stop second guessing yourself. That's probably the only way that you're going to be using that phrase. Mm. In vocabulary. I see. Yeah. So that was a really good question. That's something that I get asked often. Uh, I have one client, Ryan. And he's the one who watches these videos too. So hey, Ryan. Um, <laughs> every time he learns a new vocabulary word, he tries to mm -hmm. use it, which is good. So like mm -hmm. immediately taking it in, trying to do the application, trying to use it as much as possible. But a lot mm -hmm. of these vocabulary words aren't useful in that type of way. So when we evaluate mm -hmm. the phrase or the vocabulary word to second guess, to be fluent in English, is it something you should know? Of course, like you, you shouldn't be completely shocked or surprised when you hear it. Is it something that you actually need to use in order to be fluent? No, not at all. Like for the rest of your life when you're using English, if you never use the phrase second guess, I don't think that's going to be a problem at all. Mm. Because I saw like in Samsung or Pink, mm -hmm. he was singing like people underestimate her. And then one of the lyrics was saying like people um, second guess her or she second guessed herself. Like, I wondered whether second guessing is like people and people mis underestimate someone we use the word. Yeah, to underestimate, sure, that could have its application. Um, okay, so let's, let's break that down because this is a really good point too. That meaning is a little bit different from what I just spent this conversation talking about, but... Mm -hmm. So underestimating something isn't the same as hesitating, right? But in the mm -hmm. context before, I need to stop second guessing myself. I need to stop underestimating myself. Okay, that works. And so mm -hmm. in the lyrics of that song, without looking it up, is she trying to like be more confident? She's trying to say, oh, people should stop underestimating me. That also fits in mm -hmm. that particular context, right? But mm -hmm. is that a widely used version of the meaning? Probably not. Just like I think mm -hmm. with Japanese songs, like some of the lyrics, they're, they're really beautiful. And maybe because they love the song so much, some people start to repeat it, right? But if you really sit and think, is that the most natural, most common way to use that mm -hmm. vocabulary? Probably not. Because it fits songs, but yeah, it fits doesn't the song. fit. Mm, so, <laughs> sometimes it's done to be catchy sometimes it's a style choice sometimes mm. it fits the rhythm mm -hmm. and again you always have the ability to pick and choose for your own personal style i just mm. when i'm working with people sometimes like they don't know how to differentiate it right so sometimes mm. e even for native speakers we'll use like a weird choice and like it'll get a strange reaction and people will be kind of confused but for a non-native English speaker, when they have that moment, when someone looks at them like that, they lose a lot of confidence. Then they say, oh my God, mm. was my grammar wrong? Was my pronunciation wrong? Oh, like I, I've been working so hard with my English and people still can't understand me. But there's different levels and layers to this, right? So we mm. have the vocabulary word, we have the meaning, but then how can you actually use it? And I can use it this way, but what's the most common way to use it? And if I use it a different way, what's what's a potential reaction from it? You have to think about all those type of things. I see. I got it. Okay. Thank you. Great. <laughs> and then, yeah, we'll stop the recording there.